Hi, this is Larry London. We welcome you once again to the Voice of America. It's Border Crossings, and we have another special guest today. Today, a Grammy-nominated superstar who's been around the world many times. In fact, he uh, grew up and lived in South Africa and has lived in England. Now he calls California home. We'd like to welcome to the studios from his brand-new album, So Strong, Jonathan Butler. Welcome. Thank you for having me out here. It's great to be here. It's wonderful to have you, and uh, 15 albums. I think so. I think there's more, but we will. Well, that's another interview. We'll have to figure that out. How did this all get started for you? I mean, were you a songwriter first, or were you always playing music and? Recording? I was a singer at first. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, you know, growing up in South Africa. I was involved with with carnival, which is really exciting. I mean, you, you, you know, it's one time in, in in you know in South Africa that you can really experience the cultural the Mm -hmm. different cultures of music and styles of music and i was also in malay choirs so i used to compete in the carnival and malay choirs and Mm -hmm. i did cabaret shows at very early you know seven eight years old i was doing cabaret variety shows in the community so i was thrown out there into the world of show business you Mm -hmm. know um and that's how it all really started for me and i you know it's a beautiful country it's it, you know I can't describe it. It's one of the places in the world that is so incredibly beautiful to see. You know, yeah. And it's not always been easy. It's not, you know. <laughs> no, it's not been easy. It's not been easy. Um, but you know, I think I've always said where there's great poverty, there's great spirit, and that's that spirit of Africa. And the, it's funny. One comedian said it best. He said, you know. He, he he's, he's still to find a nation when they are angry they dance you know South Africa <laughs> is a is a nation even during apartheid mm-hmm. we we developed a dance called toy toy I mean it's crazy you know you tell a guy he's fired he'll walk out dancing you know but he's angry so uh, South Africa is very unique I I, I now live in I, I became a British citizen and I I live in the U S and. I feel like I'm a citizen of the world, so to speak. But South Africa, I'm very proud of what you know, how far uh, we've come. You know, I know this has been a difficult year for you. Yeah, you know, uh, with different various uh, health concerns, and yeah. I know you lost your mother. You yes. lost one of your best friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, I I have to say, O nine has been very challenging for everybody around the world. You know, um, and uh, for me as. Uh, uh, it, it, I felt I had a lot to learn. I had a lot to grow into when I learned my mother died and my best friend Wayman passed away and my wife was diagnosed with uh, cancer and uh, she's a cancer survivor. But the process, all of that uh, process, uh, it, it, you know, you grow so quickly. You know, you can either grow in the right direction or the wrong direction. For me, thank God, it was about, you know, learning to you know, not only walk by faith, but, you know, you got to speak it out, Mm -hmm. the things you believe. And and I just really believed that God was going to heal my wife and my mother's in a good place. And so is Wayman. Mm -hmm. And I made a CD in the middle of all of this craziness and and had to come up with uh, my first record for Mac Avenue. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it, and it's full of joy. It's just full of fun, you know. And that's, I think, we, we need to get back to a little bit of uh, fun and, and not as serious as we... Every time you turn on the TV, it's just crazy, you right, know. It's right. just a lot of doom and gloom. And I, I think my album, So Strong, is it, it's, it's light and, and it's fun. And so the title, did you take that from this past year of struggles It for just yourself? so happens to tie itself into everything that I had to go through. Mm-hmm. And I think I it can't you know there couldn't be a better title than just to call it so strong for what it is. I mean, uh, I got a song in there called "I Can See Clearly Now," right? Uh, which the Jimmy old Johnny Cliff, Nash song, or Johnny Nash, Johnny right. Nash sang it. You know, and it's funny because to me that's like my testimony. Mm-hmm. That sort of covers the whole spectrum mm-hmm. of what I've what we've been through in '09 and and how great I can finally see you know, uh, gone are the dark dark clouds that had me bind you know it's a bright you know, bright sunny day mm-hmm. so that's how I feel and that's why I picked that song as well so yeah the album is so strong that definitely says a lot about what what's happened how is this different musically from let's say uh, your last album or some of your past albums? well this is the this is the return to R&B for me mm-hmm. um, it's been, been a while since I actually did an R&B record you know um, there are there are some jazz contemporary jazz tracks on there mm-hmm. like um, uh, 
instrumental tracks mm -hmm. with me playing more electric than mm -hmm. uh, acoustic guitar because everybody knew me or knows me for the nylon string sound. Mm -hmm. But this is more like a jazz type of approach to the instrumentals. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's all R and B love songs and you know and uh, it's a return you know uh, to what I started out with. And these are songs you all you wrote all your. I songs. wrote um, most of them, and mm -hmm. I co-wrote a bit of them too. Nate. Yeah, with a very good friend of mine. You're touring right now for the new album. I'll be starting uh, my tour uh, with Dave Cars starting June, right through August, and then I'll be on the road. As a, as a matter of fact, from June through January till January, mm -hmm. I'll be on the road um, promoting albums, uh, this album, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. Are you going uh, anywhere internationally? People can see. You I the will world? be actually. I'll be in Botswana. I'll be in U Uganda. I'll I'll be um, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I, there's a chance I might go back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so there'll be a lot of international travels as well. And how can people keep in touch with your website? My uh, website is looking fantastic uh, these days. Just had it redone, and oh. uh, you know they can see the chiseled abs. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> the six pack. I <laughs> have a one pack. Yeah, oh man. I don't even talk about that. I've lost, I've lost track of it. It's disappeared. But my website is all new, mm -hmm. and uh, twittering and Facebook, and people can see exactly where I'm playing. And what is the website address? JonathanButler.com. Just that simple. Yeah, just that simple. You're a very accomplished songwriter. You wrote for George Benson. You yes, wrote I for did. quite a few other artists yes, as well. Yes, I did. I guess you just have to be. Uh, at the right place uh, and at the right time and and um, i was really very 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 fortunate and blessed to write for george benson uh algero as well mm -hmm. uh, i even wrote a song for tom jones who was my child when i when i was a child hmm. i mean that was my hero i mean she was my my delilah you know i thought this guy's voice was as big as <laughs> moses and so i wrote for pointer sisters uh patty you know patty labelle wow. uh, regina bell uh for quite a few people I grew up listening to Stevie Wonder, and he was my, just my idol and my hero. Uh, he just inspired me to be a songwriter and, and, and just to be, I mean, everything that Stevie recorded, I have. Mm -hmm. And one of the highlights for me was when he um, called me on the phone and sang my song, Falling in Love with Jesus, to me on the phone. Wow. And I really didn't believe it. I really didn't want to believe it until one day I'm watching television and it was TBN and there's Stevie Wonder again singing my song, Falling in Love with Jesus. And uh, it just, um, it doesn't get better than that. Right. That that for me was basically it. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Now but, when, you know, I mean, as an accomplished musician like yourself, Grammy yeah. nominations and all the albums and songwriting and touring, as you put on the radio today and you listen to today's contemporary music, yeah. what are your thoughts? Are you like what you're hearing or are you concerned about what you're hearing? Well, you know, the reason I left R&B uh, uh, years ago is like I had problems with the content, mm -hmm. lyrical content. I had a problem with that because, A, I'm a born-again Christian uh, mm -hmm. for 30 years. Mm. And um, so I was having all these hits in, in R&B when I was in my late 20s and early 30s. But I struggled with the content, and so I and I felt it was getting too formulated. Everything was like sounding the same, you mm -hmm. know. Like if if somebody had a hit out, then it, everybody had to have the same hit, you know. Right, if it's right. Brianna, well, let's make another song like Brianna, you know. And yep. so I did. I felt like I wasn't a formula art type of artist, mm -hmm. and I felt the content uh, lyrically. Uh, I needed to step back from that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that was just for me personally. But I feel like the music, every 10 years, you are going to have, there's going to be some shift in the music mm -hmm. in the way music is going to sound, the way, uh, the topics of the day. I mean, we used to listen to music. When I grew up, I was listening to, you know, artists write about what's the state of the world, Stevie Wonder being one of them, mm -hmm. um, uh, James Taylor, you know, uh, all these great guys. And so... I think I'm I'm cool with what's going on because I think the new generation has they have a completely different uh, outlook on what the world looks like to them versus me who grew up under apartheid right. and have this you know I really value freedom I really believe people died for me to be here mm -hmm. and so I, I I feel like I have to carry that torch with me you know and wear that. Have you met uh, Mandela? Yes, I did. Talk about highlights. Uh, that was the uh, the most amazing. Uh, uh, day uh, of my life. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I went to, uh, I didn't go to the funeral when my mother passed away, but 
I, I, I was in Cape Town and I went to go say goodbye to my mother just on my own. Mm-hmm. And that very same afternoon, I had to sing for Mandela and wow. his wife. And uh, he was sitting where you were sitting, like this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was looking into his eyes. And I mean, I, I could hardly keep the lyric coming because I was emotional, so mm-hmm. emotional. It was just an emotional day. And I just, after the song, I, um, I just went over to him and, uh, you know, whispered in his ear that I loved him and he whispered back in my ear that he loved me and and that was it was the most amazing the most amazing thing ever 